Was Animal Crossing New Horizons a scam? Nope. Thanks for watching this video. I know it helped a lot of you form opinions about the game. Glad I could be of assistance. All right, I'll actually talk about it. I saw this tweet the other day that went pretty viral calling New Horizons a scam. And it got me thinking, was New Horizons that bad? Also, don't go looking for this tweet. They can say whatever they want. They're not a bad person because their opinion is different than yours. Don't, just, just leave them alone. Anyway, the developers decided to do something a little different with New Horizons to keep up with the current gaming industry. Every decent game that is released now has some kind of update schedule for years after the game releases. If you don't do this, then you made a bad game and people hate you. So Nintendo decided they wanted to introduce an update schedule to New Horizons when it finally released. The timing of this release was the best and also the worst thing that could have ever happened to this game. Before we dive into whether or not New Horizons was the worst video game ever made, let's take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Factor. Factor has been a lifesaver when I don't have time to throw together a meal. I can grab the food and heat it up quickly for something healthy to eat, saving me time and avoiding any stress of having to figure out what the heck to cook. Now I can play Animal Crossing without having to spend an hour trying to think of what to make for dinner and just cook stuff in Animal Crossing. I, this life is so much better. Factor has got it covered with their pre-prepared and ready-to-eat meals that go from fridge to my plate in just two minutes. I sit down all day playing games and editing videos. Eating a Factor meal gets me that one step closer to my wellness goals through nutritious, purposeful eating. No more greasy takeout every single night. And it, as much as I love ramen, it's nice to take a break from it every once in a while. Factor has meal preferences options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and vegetarian meals, along with more than 27 different meal options each week to choose from. So there's something for everyone. And if I'm gone for the week, I can just easily skip that week if I need to and come back the following week with delicious food waiting for me at my door. With easy snacks like smoothies or shakes, Factor has my whole day covered, and it can cover your day as well. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGCORAJUL50 for 50% off your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count off the purchases. Now that we've gotten a delicious meal, let's get back to the question of the year. Is New Horizons a scam? The biggest issue with New Horizons is that it initially came out with less mechanics than its predecessor, and many people weren't happy about it. We're in a world where drip feeding players updates over time is king. Fortnite headed this unique way to keep gamers coming back, and now everyone is adopting something similar to make sure their game stays relevant. A relevant game means more people playing longer, which forces the game into the front of players' minds, and also shoved into new players' faces, which means more money for the company. More money is always the goal. Nintendo wanted to follow a similar idea to what the gaming industry is doing, and this could work really well for a game like Animal Crossing that has so much to do, especially at the beginning of the game. This on paper seems like a great idea. Give us the major mechanics to play with for a month or so, and then by the time we've mastered them, the developers are ready to give us something new to keep our attention. But they didn't execute these updates in a timely fashion, which left many players bored. And again, it wasn't all their fault, just like half their fault. The world and the pandemic kind of screwed them over. I remember everyone being super upset that swimming wasn't available immediately. Swimming was one of the new mechanics that was added to New Leaf. All you had to do was meet the criteria for purchasing the wetsuit, which involved unlocking Tortimer's Island and playing mini games to earn enough tokens to purchase the thing. So diving wasn't something that was available to us right away. However, it did exist in the game from the beginning. It was just a matter of playing and progressing to be able to access the giant ocean. This, however, changed in New Horizons. Instead of having to play to unlock the mechanic, Nintendo just held on to it until the summertime. No one could swim no matter how far you progressed in the game. It didn't matter how much you played, how much you time traveled, you literally could not swim until Nintendo decided to let us swim. This wasn't some new feature that they were holding back for us to be excited to play for the first time. This was something that we had already been able to do in the past, and now with this new game, we couldn't do it anymore. So they kind of just stole it from us. There are certain situations like the swimming mechanic where I understand why people would be upset. The replies to this tweet did make a few valid points. There are a handful of mechanics from New Leaf that weren't available to us like the additional fruit or mini games or tiny details like stumps having different patterns when you chop down trees. But New Leaf and New Horizons are different games. While it's upsetting that not everything in New Leaf came back, I understand why it didn't. Just because games are a part of the same series doesn't mean all the mechanics are going to be there, but you would expect the basic ones to exist. 
games like Animal Crossing tend to attract people who enjoy playing at their own pace. That's one of the main themes of the game, you can log on, do what you want for the day, and move on with the rest of your real life. But these drip-fed updates hindered that experience at the beginning of the game's release. We had the super basic mechanics that every other Animal Crossing game has had in the past, but they did introduce us some brand new mechanics to occupy our time, like crafting and finally being able to place furniture outside. However, it still felt like the game that was supposed to be a do-whatever-you-want kind of thing didn't really let us do whatever we wanted. If we wanted to rush through the game, we could only go so far. We weren't allowed to skip to any of the holidays, find sea creatures, go get coffee at the roost. We had to just wait while we were all stuck inside with only Animal Crossing to entertain us because we all got through everything on Netflix and we had nothing left to do except play New Horizons. The developers thought the beginning mechanics and the update schedule they had planned would be enough to introduce us to the game and take us seamlessly to the next planned update. And under normal circumstances, it probably would have been. Sure, there would have been those people who dropped hundreds of hours in the game in a week or two, but COVID happened, and we all became hardcore gamers, which seemed to have ruined all of their plans. Datamines came out shortly after the game released, showing specific mechanics that were brand new to the series that we just couldn't access yet. Some of the things were cooking, or farming, or bringing the art gallery back to the museum. But that's all it was, just data mines. We didn't actually have the physical mechanics at our palms. Until the 2.0 update that we eventually got, they gave us a bunch of new mechanics that we were looking for at the beginning of the game's life. But this update took a year and a half to come out, so we were just teased with data mines for like a whole year. I guess it's more our fault, and also COVID. During a financial results conference call at the beginning of the pandemic, Nintendo mentioned that the Japanese Nintendo offices did not already have a remote development environment in place. There were big limitations as to what developers could do at home on their own devices, which means a lot of stuff they had planned, well, it probably wasn't going to be released on time. And we definitely experienced this. The only mechanics we got when summer finally came out? Swimming and art, the two mechanics that were already in the game seven years ago and I agree definitely should have been part of the game on launch. I'm all for drip feeding new content. However, I want it to actually be new content, especially in a game that's designed in a way to play the way you want to play. You shouldn't have to wait for mechanics that I've already used in past games. But I do like constant updates, if they're done right. We could have gotten all the mechanics that were data mined back in 2020 throughout the year. That would have been amazing. I think that was their plan all along, however, COVID seemed to have stifled any progress during the development process, which caused updates to be delayed. We could have gotten a really good Animal Crossing game, and I hope Nintendo learns from the mistakes they made with the post-release development of New Horizons. Like coming out with the game when Bunny Day was right around the corner. Oof, this was the biggest mistake by far. I have an award-winning video on why everyone really hates Bunny Day, but just to break it down, a few days after release, Zipper decided to show up and cover everyone's activities with eggs. Were you trying to catch those new fish in April? Too bad, the first 12 days of the month were filled with eggs everywhere you looked. If you bought the game at or near release, this was a time when you had an entire game open to you. You could fish to find new fish, you could catch bugs, you could hit rocks to get some resources. But every activity was infested with eggs for 12 whole days. The following year, the developers took our criticism and changed the length of the holiday from 12 days down to 7 days. Which is better, but still not good. I'd rather have any other holiday last 7 days. Give me pave every day, just not this thing. I can also see how some of the trailers kind of tricked us into thinking the game was going to have more features during release. Just small things, like this white picket fence. Why did we have to wait for the 2.0 update to finally customize fences? And don't get me started on this museum build. It looks great, right? Until you realize that you could have only placed 8 inclines on your entire island and this one area has 5 of them. Not the most scammy thing, of course, but it did lead us to believe that we would be able to build whatever we wanted to build without limitations. But this is a Switch game. You can only do so much before the number of items on your island starts causing lag and issues and crying. So this is probably the reason that they limited the number of bridges and inclines that we could use. But thankfully, Nintendo is a Nintendo and they are always listening. So they did some cool things like allowing us to place two more bridges and inclines on our islands or sit. S still not crazy stuff, but again, better than nothing. 
Also, kind of mad at Nintendo because like I got a really ugly villager for my first campsite villager. So yeah, maybe I am on team New Horizons is a scam game. It's clear that New Horizons isn't perfect, but that doesn't mean it still isn't a great game. I just spent six minutes talking about all the places it failed, but there is still a bunch that it got right. Animal Crossing players tend to compare New Horizons and New Leaf, which makes sense. They're both mainline games in a series. However, that's where their similarities stop. New Leaf and New Horizons are very different games. They have different end games, completely different goals. New Leaf is about building up Main Street, unlocking all of the amenities the game wants to give you. New Horizons is all about taking this desolate, deserted island and creating a beautiful scene. So again, these could literally be completely different games from a completely different series, and they would both be good games. Nostalgia also plays a big role in how people view New Leaf. It's a big part of the reason why I like the original Animal Crossing the best. Don't get me wrong, there are some things that New Leaf did right, like the ability to upgrade Main Street even though I don't agree with all the requirements. It was still a fun objective to work towards. Except Katrina. We had to wait for her to show up in our towns and hope that you play the day that she does show up and talk to her for 20 visits and then pay for her public works project to be built on Main Street. I've been playing New Leaf for 10 years and I still have yet to unlock this shop. But besides the objective of filling up Main Street, it really doesn't feel like there's much left to do. Just the normal catch fish and bugs, talk to your neighbors. When I log into New Leaf today, all I do is check for Katrina and then run to Tortimer's Island, play some mini games and catch summer beetles to earn bells for nothing. No reason, I don't need bells in this game anymore. New Leaf almost seems to have a similar problem to New Horizons, where you just have to kind of wait. And I don't really like waiting. New Horizons doesn't have mini games, but it does have things like villager hunting, long-term nookmao goals, decorating an entire island with furniture that you don't have to wait for a neighbor to specifically ask for and then pay and wait a day, and I'm talking about public works projects, I really hated those things. They each have their positives and negatives, but just because this game doesn't have everything New Leaf had, doesn't mean it's a scam. I would have felt scammed if New Horizons was exactly the same as New Leaf. Anyone remember the number of similarities between Wild World and City Folk? City Folk was basically a port with some improvements. I would have been incredibly upset if New Horizons turned out the same way. We don't need another New Leaf. We have New Leaf. If you want to play New Leaf, go play New Leaf. Nothing is going to capture the magic of playing that first Animal Crossing game. You just gotta keep rolling with what Nintendo wants to give us. And honestly, they're giving us some pretty cool stuff. We no longer have to wait for the public's work projects for a villager to randomly request a bench. Sure, we have to find a recipe, but that happens way more often than waiting for these villagers to ask for something. Now we can just put a bench out with a few resources in a second, and it doesn't cost a ridiculous amount of bells. One of the arguments people and this tweet thread use specifically is that the deserted island felt barren. To me, it's basically the same as a brand new town in every other game. Previously, there had been nothing there except for a couple businesses and villager homes and a, and a bunch of trees. It's not called Animal Forest for no reason. But now we get to see the place before villager homes exist. We can customize everything to our liking. But I guess if you're not good at decorating or don't have a clear vision of what you want, this seems like a daunting task. Especially after spending our days on the internet looking at islands created by real life architects and interior designers. Literally everyone was playing this game. It's impossible to live up to those standards. It can be completely demoralizing to try something and have it not turn out well. A blank canvas is intimidating. If you aren't feeling inspired or creative, or maybe decorating just isn't your thing, then that's all it is, just a blank canvas. Something like terraforming can be intimidating too. Creating land square by square is not only tedious, but can be super annoying. However, this type of annoying, square by square terraforming, is required to actually customize every inch of your island. Sure, we could have god mode decorating, but that doesn't take as long. It doesn't take your blood, sweat, and tears. Don't you love your little piece of land so much more because you spent three hours trying to get the angles perfectly right? Most people's number one complaint with New Horizons are that the villagers are too boring. But they were boring as hell in New Leaf too. They really haven't been fun since the very early days of Animal Crossing. Just thought I'd bring that point up because that's the one I hear all the time and I agree with that the villagers are boring as hell. Animal Crossing is a game that you're supposed to play a little bit every day. People were upset that there was nothing left to do after the first month of playing the game. But they also threw upwards of 300 hours into a single player game in a, like a month or two. 
I don't know about you, but there aren't too many single player games that I can easily throw 2000 hours into. So, was this game a scam? No, not even close. Was it something a lot of people weren't expecting? Sure. The main objectives are definitely different from what we're used to with Animal Crossing games. But just for a second, don't compare this game to other Animal Crossing games. Separate it from the series, and you'll realize that New Horizons is fantastic. People are entitled to their opinion. Animal Crossing games in general aren't for everyone. If this game isn't for you, then it isn't for you. That doesn't mean that this game is a bad game or a scam. Maybe New Leaf is just a better Animal Crossing for you. That's fine. If you don't like the game, you don't like it. It's not wrong. Maybe you need a huge storyline to follow. Maybe you can't handle the idea of a sandbox game. If you're a completionist, then this game will be the most stressful thing on the planet. There's literally so many items to collect in this game that it was created in a way where you aren't supposed to be able to find everything. You're just supposed to take your time. But players, including me, rushed through the limited content that we had. A little bit our fault, also a little bit Nintendo's fault, also a lot of, like, you know, the world's fault. We all kind of sucked. If you still think New Horizons was a scam, I'm sorry you couldn't enjoy this game. I'm sorry you don't see the beauty New Horizons has to offer. I'm sorry this game isn't for you. I truly enjoy this game and I hope you'll give the series another chance in the future. Do you want to see a real scam video game? This is a scam video game. Look at this kid in the class. I can't believe I paid $60 for this game.